This is TV Podcast Industries, and we're talking about The Bad Batch, Season 2, Episode 2, Ruins of War. So, what you're telling me is that your rogue clones, running from the Empire's clones, who used to be the Republic's clones. Uh, correct. You finally got it right. Welcome back, fellow Batchers. This is TV Podcast Industries, and we're looking at The Bad Batch, Episode 2 of Season 2, Ruins of War. I am one of your hosts, John. I'm one of your other hosts, Derek. And rounding out this trio of Batchers, I am Chris. Good stuff. Yes, this is the second part of this two-part opener, released on the 4th of January, Mm -hmm. uh, which we're covering. So this takes off exactly, or should I say, plummets to Earth, uh, exactly where we left off uh, Uh for episode one, The Spoils of War. Yeah. I think uh, we should probably start to dig into our spoiler-filled discussion of episode two, Ruins of War. Absolutely, yeah. Make sure you watch the second episode as well uh, as the first episode, because we're going to be spoiling all of us uh, as we go in. But uh, we would love if you subscribe to the podcast, if you're joining us for Star Wars The Bad Batch for the first time, uh, subscribe to the podcast over on our website at tvpodcastindustries.com or just search up TV Podcast Industries on any podcast player and you can pick up the podcast there. Uh, we'd also love to hear your feedback about the episodes we're recording these a little bit in advance, so um, we don't have the opportunity to get your feedback in, but we'd love to know your thoughts. Uh, you can email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or pop over to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tvpodcastindustries. Indeed, yes. Uh, welcome, fellow batches, mm-hmm. new and old. Yes. Uh, let us get into the who, what, were, when, how, why, and but. Derek, <laughs> okay. what are some of the episode details? <laughs> well, executive producers for the show, of course, are Dave Filoni and Jennifer Corbett. Uh, this episode was written by Gina Lukita Monreal, uh, the first episode of The Bad Batch that uh, Gina has written. But she's written 29 episodes of NCIS, crazily enough. <laughs> yes, well, lots <laughs> of experience there. Yeah, really Military enough. intrigue abound. There you yes. go. There you go. Maybe that was uh, the reason why she wanted to hop over to The Bad Batch and all of the, those clone troopers. Uh, maybe yes. that was it. <laughs> and the episode was directed by Nathaniel Villanova. Uh, Nathaniel has directed six episodes of The Bad Batch and directed an episode of Tales of the Jedi, the uh, the uh, short summer out uh, last year as well. So uh, go check those out. There's a great story of Count Dooku uh, in, uh, in that uh, t- Tales of the Jedi and a great story of Ahsoka uh, Tano as well. So uh, check those out really, uh, really quick to watch. I think it's uh, all the episodes come in under 45 minutes, I think. Yeah, pretty uh, much. In total. Uh, so about five to five minutes, ten minutes for each of the episodes. So uh, well worth checking out. But John, do you want to tell us what they gave us with your synopsis for The Bad Batch, episode two of season two, Runes of War? Sure. As the container with Tech, Echo and Amiga hurtles to the ground, the re-entry thrusters kick in just in time, landing the trio precariously on the side of a cliff. In the fall, Tech fractures his leg, and Omega and Echo have to leave behind the contents of Count Dooku's war chest to get him to safety. With the help of Romar Adele, a native of the planet Serrano, they hide out while waiting for the rest of the Bad Batch to recover them. As Rekka and Hunter improvise a cannon to battle their way back to their ship, the Marauder, Omega makes another attempt to raid the war chest. She fails, but Romar convinces her that the cursed treasure won't make her happy, and the Bad Batch escapes Serrano empty-handed, but alive. Back on the planet's surface, Vice Admiral Rampart confronts clone Captain Wilco over his report that Clone Force 99 were behind the attack. To cover his tracks and avoid Grand Moff Tarkin's wrath, Rampart kills the Captain and removes all trace of the Bad Batch from the official report to the Empire. Ooh, Rampart's back. He is. <laughs> <laughs> Rampart comes down the Rampart. Yes. <laughs> and, and poor Captain Wilco falls off the Rampart as well. Yes, he does. Um, <laughs> plunges off the Rampart, indeed, yeah. to, uh, well, he's probably dead, hopefully. I think he was probably dead from before the first he, shot. Yes, yes, before he hits the ground. Yes. 
But with uh, the talk of that big spoiler of the end, Mm -hmm. uh, let us get into our top points. We cover them by blaster point, our top three blaster points for each episode. But let us get into blaster point number one. (laughs) (laughs) That that noise comes to you from the the, the not so blastery blaster. The pew, 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 pew. (laughs) <laughs> but Chris, would you like to take us away with blaster point number one, Romar Adele and his assistants? Sure. This is actually a quite a fun one. So the, we come plummeting to Earth, um, and essentially it's the uh, what I thought was going to be the MacGuffin of the episode. The 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 actual old man in the forest mm-hmm. who. Turns out to be something important at the end. Um, but no, Romar Dell is just your average citizen who has been purged and plundered and cast out by the Empire due to his lord, the, the, the Count Dooku, mm-hmm. the, his count, um, essentially, uh, being a dark Jedi and dying and they are paying the price. Yeah. Um, he now lives in the forest as his city was bombarded. Mm-hmm. Um, he holds no, um, he holds no like or love for the empire, but he does feel that the batch are just as bad. They're there to take the spoils of war, the ruin that has come from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, when they try and push back and very much kind of talk, no, 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 this is why we're doing it. He's like, but it's not yours to take. It was before the em- before it was the empire's. It was ours. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, which yeah. again is that kind of fun, the deep level stuff that we always talk about nearly every episode, or I talk about every episode, which is, yeah, on a, on a surface level, kids show very kind of above kind of straight shooting. Mm-hmm. But once you kind of scratch slightly on the surface, you're like, oh, yeah, well, like, actually, yeah, Dooku would have strip-mined his own planet first mm-hmm. yeah, it, before that, going to the next one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I, I really enjoyed this because I think, um, you know, in, in a lot of Bad Batch episodes and even with the Clone Wars, there's, there's always that notion of the allegiance of that planet yeah. to their their ruler or leader mm-hmm. and um you you kind of go into this thinking that Romar would be sympathetic to Dooku there's also the assumption from the bad batch that this massive war chest that he has was uh taken from foreign worlds that mm-hmm. he had conquered um on behalf of the trade alliance in terms of his cover uh, and bringing uh, either back to his home world. Mm-hmm. But yeah, as you said, Chris, like Romar says, well, Dooku took from his own people as well, not just from foreign worlds. So, yeah. um, that's suddenly you, you realize that it's, you know, this complexity of the population that he's mm-hmm. certainly no fan of Dooku and he believes this whole treasure chest to be ultimately cursed. Um, yeah. And they shouldn't be going after it. So I thought that was a nice, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I thought that was a a really nice touch Mm -hmm. uh, as well as, you know, him, like you say, you know, is this the red herring? Is he some kind of loyalist or, you know, would he hand them over to the empire? Mm -hmm. Uh, We see through this episode, he doesn't. He, he helps them at, at every step of the way, even though effectively he doesn't have a choice um to shelter them in his home he he's effectively told you must help us and he has no choice in the matter so it mm. kind of makes the best of the situation yeah yeah absolutely i, I kind of liked his his line about being uh did he call himself sarah sarah louise is that was that the yeah. name he he calls the people of the planet yeah. so he's kind of saying you know yes dooku was the leader but before that, we were our own planet. We we didn't um all, we weren't always of the same belief. We weren't always followers of Dooku. We were our own people beforehand, and that's who I am. So I thought that was a really uh, a really good discussion, as you say, Chris. There's little moments with people throughout the galaxy and their impact on them individually as things that you you would the corners of this galaxy that you wouldn't have seen uh, in previous shows and movies. So uh, it's what they do very well here. Yeah, no, agreed. Um, I will call out that when he, he gives Omega 
the uh, essentially kaleidoscope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, oh, cool, my holocron, my Jedi thing, my... Nope. nope. It's a kaleidoscope. It's a kaleidoscope. Yeah. And it's yep. a kaleidoscope that makes her happy. So that's the kind of thing she should be chasing after. Not money and, and riches. Uh, she should be chasing after things that make her happy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and thanks, Dad. Yeah. No, I know that. I, also I know there's want some a riches, moral though. lesson in here. <laughs> I was just going, "Ooh, cool, shiny Jedi thing." Yeah, but no. Okay. <laughs> Do you know how many kaleidoscopes I could buy with one of the war chests from getting? <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but that's the other kind of yeah, the moral there from uh, Romar. Mm-hmm. This this idea, you know, and you see this with Echo and Tech in their own disagreements. You know, Tech. Basically, is don't go back to the the cargo container because mm-hmm. does it really matter? We're we're just in the same place as we were before. You know, we haven't gotten those riches, but it doesn't make us any worse off than what we were before yes. we went on the mission. Where Echo really is about, you know, we need that stash. He's seeing the Empire getting stronger and stronger, yes. and that this will at least weaken them in a, some way by mm. not having these resources of Dooku's war chest to be able to use against the people in the galaxy. Yeah. So his view is, you know, we need to, to help. We need to um, help others. And it, it, it's that, dare I say it, echo from the first um, episode yeah. there in his conversation with Hunter. Or at least uh, it will well. help fund them. To, uh, yeah. to save other people, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We, we do learn, in, look, we learned it in Andor, rebellions cost money. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it takes money to fund a a, 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 a fight back. Yeah. Um, so, again, seeing echoes of the first couple of episodes of Andor being echoed here mm-hmm. um, in that they need money. Like, it's not going to be, they can't, I, I, in season one, we, we saw them struggle with cost of fuel. Mm-hmm. Like it's the same thing. Yeah. So I'm hoping again that this was not a maybe in the beginning of episode three we're gonna see one of them go. Oh, but I did find this here, this diamond I managed to put in my pocket. Mm. Um, maybe, so yeah. we at least have something from all these problems. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I mentioned last episode about uh, Omega taking something from each of her father's uncles. Um, and here we see that Omega's taken echoes tenacity for and wanting to go back and get that war chest because she's the one that wants to go back to the container she while everybody's asleep she uh she steals out in the night to go and and climb into the war chest and and prove her worth almost and she's so fixated on that because of that conversation she overheard in episode one uh with hunter where basically by them taking her they have now have a life on the run effectively is what she believes and that's that's why she feels she has to go out on this her own mission uh, to get that the war chest they they failed to get so uh, putting herself once again a little bit of danger uh, for for Amiga. I do love how you kind of politely call it tenacity when mm. I may call it stubbornness. Yes, but <laughs> yes, absolutely, <laughs> it's yeah. the polite way of calling it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But also, the, the container is in that precarious position. There are Imperial speeders arriving, uh, but on the basis of, um, the, the coordination from mm-hmm. the, the lead, uh, clone trooper here. And, uh, even though the container is slipping, that's where you have that resolution with Echo and, and Amiga where, um, you know, she's saying, you don't have a normal life because of me. Mm-hmm. That's why I need to get this. Um, yeah. This, this money, uh, and these jewels and these credits. Yeah. Um, whereas Echo suddenly is the, you know, you have to let the war chest go because this, this container is slipping and we need yes. to stay alive. But, you know, he, Echo goes back to Omega and say, you know, we made, I made the right choice and mm-hmm. I'd do it all again, uh, saving you, helping you, you Absolutely. know? Yeah. Absolutely. Did anybody else get a little shade of uh, another George Lucas, uh, Steven Spielberg property in this uh, in this moment with Echo? Um, for some reason, I was really reminded of uh, Indiana Jones: The Last Crusade, the reaching out for the for the uh, the cup of Christ. Oh yes, uh, at the end of of uh, of that movie where. Um, Sean Connery, his dad, is calling to him, going, you need to give that up. We have enough riches, effectively. This may have been your quest, but you need to give it up. There was just that moment when uh, when uh, Omega was reaching, going, I must get this. I must prove myself. And she's being told, you don't need to. We did what we did. We we wouldn't make those. We'd, we'd make the same choices again in the future. I thought that was it, uh, an echo in itself of uh, of Indiana Jones. Yeah. 
No, I, I mean, I didn't at the time, but now you say it, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I can see where you're pulling from on that. Yeah. Definitely. But uh, any more points for blaster point number one? Nothing really. I was, I was quite surprised that we leave uh, Romar on the planet at the end. Um, because I, I think at, at the beginning when we meet him, I thought he was going to be uh, possibly keeping a lot of people in the basement of his house, you know, that, that he was going to be possibly some kind of uh, future rebel leader or something like that, where some of the other people from Serrano would be living with him and that's why he needed to get back. But he's living on his own uh, as a survivor on this planet. There's no other people on the planet that we can see and he still stays there. I thought that we'd end the episode with him coming along with the Bad Batch to a better place because the planet has been, you know, Bombed from decimated. and absolutely decimated, yeah, but he yeah. says, "I'm going to stay. I'm going to live here." You know, well, um, this is home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought it was an interesting way to end his story. I just thought, you know, he's he passes on his wisdom and then goes back into the forest again. I am wondering if they're going to start picking up like these types of characters yeah. from season one and season two to start to pull together their rebellion. Um, I, I I kind of hope so because he brings the art and culture aspect. Yeah, because yep. that was his whole thing working on the the data cube. Mm-hmm. Um, I did expect this arc a bit more to be ending with something a, a new thread. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, this feels this part of it feels very self contained. Yeah. yeah, like like they 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 no longer have the war chests. They they no longer have that, and they just escape onto the dark beyond um to without a kind of essentially with nothing to show for mm. their worth or with their work i should say yeah mission failed bad batch yes, yes. indeed um but shall we move on to blaster point two let's do it oh my left shoulder. You're going to get very sick of that by the end of the 16th episode. I might, I might <laughs> I have to pull some other uh, blaster sounds <laughs> from the world of Star Wars. Yes, you will. <laughs> we have blaster point number two. Uh, on the other side, uh, in, mm. with the other two, Hunter and Wrecker, as they try to escape from the devastated uh, city below uh, Dooku's uh, citadel. Yeah, we didn't really mention it last episode uh, at all, but I did like um, them going into uh, Dooku's castle. I thought that was uh, that was it was cool having the two of them in there. I loved the joke of uh, of them trying to get out in the lift, and the lift doesn't work because it's been shot by one of the troopers. And then uh, <laughs> and then Wrecker, of course, is going, "Well, I can get that to work," and bounces up and down on the yeah. lift until it, uh, it releases them effectively. I thought that was great fun. And and Wrecker's, you know, he has a couple of sighs as well here because of that. He's again having to uh, deal with his. Um, fear of heights mm-hmm. as well both yeah. with the plunging lift but also then as they make their only escape route down into the city from mm-hmm. Dooku's palace um so i i, I kind of just like those little nods to his oh no here comes the heights again <laughs> yeah. um which was really good yeah it's cool i i enjoyed this i i but it did remind me that wrecker is proper proper an explosive expert yes yeah Like, you do kind of get, you think of him just as the kind of, the muscle, the kind of dumb jock. And then in this very much episode, you're reminded that, no, 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 with just a battery and a tank, he's able to build a cannon and Mm -hmm. and an explosive cannon at that. And even Hunter looks at him going, wait, wait, hold on, that's not going to work. And he's like, just leave it with me. I got this. Like, this is my area. Yeah. I, I also um, liked his uh, his little disappointed note uh, when Hunter goes, "Have you got anything to blow stuff up?" And he's like, "No, just smoke bombs. Yeah, <laughs> like, nothing that will do I any know, damage." I, I, I love that delivery as well. Uh, yeah, nice to see a few clankers uh, in there on their uh, in the tank that uh, that Hunter and Wrecker go and salvage from yeah. uh, to create the cannon. That was quite a quite a nice little little moment that you're thinking, "Oh." That would be kind of cool if they go up against a battalion of uh, of clone troopers with two tanks. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. Definitely. But no, the cannon's still pretty damn good, though. Definitely. Yeah. Especially as he's running with it. Like, <laughs> that's some cardio. <laughs> oh, yes, and, is. I mean, it is the game changer as well. Because, I mean, they're pretty pinned down. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I was quite blown away by the lead clone trooper, um, Captain Wilco. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought it was like... Oh my goodness, he's very methodical here yeah. in his approach. You know, he's look, he's scanning the comms, realizes that they're split up. Yeah. 
sends the other clone troopers uh, on the speeder bikes, mm-hmm. has air support coming in, creates that perimeter. I yeah. was kind of like going, these are not the clone troopers I remember from <laughs> the, the prequels. Mm. You know, I mean, they was just seemed to be firepower. Yeah. You know, it was like... But they are the ones from the Clone Wars, like this, yeah. the TV show that, that they uh, really did give them their own individual personalities, as we've seen with this this Clone Force. But there are a lot of them that have become leaders, are very good leaders, you yeah. know, and that, that's something that um, really expanded this, the the whole world of Star Wars uh, when you have these really competent leaders in your armed forces. Yeah. So it is good to see that with Captain Definitely. Wilco. Definitely. Like I was just and well yeah, impressed a lot of his, by yeah. uh, Captain Wilco. Absolutely. A lot of his troopers were blown away as well by that cannon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, but uh, but that is their their way out. So that's how they get back to the Marauder to go and save the rest of the of, uh, of the Bad Batch. So, uh, But it was, a, it was a good fun action sequence. Uh, oh, definitely. In the yeah. Enjoyed it. Exactly. So off they go into the the space yeah. uh, to back to SIDS, I guess, but empty-handed. Yes. But yes. with many lessons learned. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we have one final thing that we need to talk about for yes. this episode. It is blaster point number three. It is kind of what we uh, briefly talked about mm. at the start. It's Vice Admiral Rampart. Yeah. Yes. I swear when I'm seeing his title come up at the end of the episode that his title is getting either extended or changed uh, each time I'm seeing him. I'm sure he was an admiral and a captain and commander uh, last season and has been uh, going on. But I can't remember, was he Vice Admiral by the end of last season? I think he was. I think he was because yeah. I remember us having the same discussions last time I'm about so ex- exactly Thanks, no 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 <laughs> just like what is he because i think yeah. he was moving up the chain of command mm-hmm. uh it, w- in um the empire yeah. uh, and he was the second in command you know governor tarkin's right hand man so yeah. um this was really good to see him back here absolutely and you mentioned governor tarkin here he is called grand moff tarkin yes. So he's also moved up the ranks, and I guess we see how these people do it, right? Um, nothing is going to stand in the way of <laughs> Rampart at all. No, no. I've heard you have a report here that Clone Force 99 were involved in this attack. That can't be possible. Well, it is. It's confirmed. Well, um, no, no. When I say it can't be possible, I'm going to have to kill you and change your report. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, good one, Rampart. Yeah, exactly. No, I, this was really dark, mm. you know. Um, falsify the mission report to exclude all reference to Clone Force uh, 99 uh, from the very capable uh, Captain Wilco, mm-hmm. who will be sadly missed by the the armies of the Republic yeah. um, as, as he, yeah, basically gets a laser blast, I'm guessing pretty much close to the head. Really. Uh, yeah. Well, um, he's not going to survive that fall either. Though. And then the fall, just yeah. to sort of top it off, it does feel like it's overkill uh, yeah. in that sense. But nonetheless, it is to preserve Rampart's dirty little secret mm-hmm. that he told to Governor Tarkin or Grand Moff Tarkin uh, that the Clone Force 99 had perished uh, in the the city of Topoka. Mm-hmm. On Camino. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is where we left off last season. So, um, and we don't really know how much time has passed since last season to this season. Um, Amiga has much longer hair, so I presume a bit of time has passed between the two seasons. Yeah, I'd say some. Yeah, some. Yeah. And I mean, certainly it seems their missions, Hunter's trying to stay off the Empire's radar. Mm-hmm. I, I'm guessing because of that, then uh, Vice Admiral Rampart's lie around uh, Topoka um, is seemingly borne out here. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I mean, this was just, yeah, it was really kind of that, the machinations, the, you know, the how you need to get what, you know, up the ladder in the Empire. Yeah. It's a cutthroat, dog-eats-dog world, you I'm know? I'm sure you were going to say doggy dog world. Yeah, I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> close, close. Uh, yeah, but a good a good moment and a good scene and a, good, a great return for uh, the villain uh, of the show, right? Yeah. Is he going to be the main one, do you think, for this season? He's certainly the one created for the Bad Batch. We never saw him in anything else before, so yeah. I kind of like that you would use him as being the big foil for the Bad Batch um, when you can't bring in uh, Grand Moff Tarkin or when you can't bring in other characters that may be being used by other shows um, yeah. would be probably the way I'd, I'd think about yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I suppose it makes sense. It's just how far can they make how far can they bring him up in within the empire mm-hmm. within the kind of the 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 the, the important class. So mm-hmm. like will he become a a, a moth himself? Well, that's it. Uh, it's like a junior Moff Tarkin. A junior <laughs> well, <Moff. laughs> ultimately, I guess, given his association with Tarkin, it's whether he's the um, on the Death Star. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe he was lucky enough not to be there because he was chasing the Bad Batch. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that would be actually interesting. Yeah. It'd be cool. Anyway, but we, we, good to see him back. Good to see him as the, the, the one of the main foil. Mm. And good to see where they go. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And we will once again be seeing the Emperor later this season. That's no uh, no spoilers, uh, really. We did see him for a speech last season, but we know we are seeing the Emperor later yes. this season as well. So I'm uh, going to be looking forward to that. Definitely. Yes. Good stuff overall, guys. Uh, any other any other notes about the episode first? Sorry, uh, not from me. Nope. Nothing. Oh, the other one for me was just the description of the Bad Batch. Uh, I really liked it the, in the discussion with Romar, where, where they finally land on so your rogue clones running from empire clones that used to be republic clones <laughs> this is the final description of who the bad batch are so uh, yes i like that yeah good one well guys uh any final thoughts then derek for episode two ruins of war yeah i really like this one um i can see why they released both in the same day um, as a as a two part kickoff, there's three of these uh, in the season. There's this uh, this two parts, then we get another two parts at the start of February, and then the final episode is uh, fifteen and sixteen is going to be another two part. But from now on, it'll be weekly episodes. But this made sense having that uh, first episode ending with a container falling out of the sky. Uh, we've got no breaks, and then jumping straight into the second episode. Um, an interesting story with Romar, as you as you mentioned, John, uh, that idea of of him being this. Uh, what what's the impact on? The people of a planet like Serrano, uh, and being that story being told through him. Um, as I said, I kind of, I'm kind of hoping that he was going to be leaving the planet with them uh, at the end of the episode. I would like to see a bit more. Maybe we'll see him again uh, in the future. But I uh, did enjoy it then. Good stuff, Chris. Uh, what about yourself? Yeah, very much similar. Uh, I see why they put it together. Um, personally, I just wanted like a, a few more threads, um, kind of like. I felt this should have been a bit more set up for the beginning of the season. Mm. Um, kind of like just outside of Rampart, just because now they just basically set the pieces on the board. Mm-hmm. Just remind you versus kind of yeah. set the pieces and give us a teaser or a, a piece of intrigue of kind of like, oh, and this might be coming down the line. Mm-hmm. Instead, we just very much just got... This is a new character. This is a new character. This character's back. This character. These are where your main characters are. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's fine. If again, for what it is, it was just, I, again, I would have hoped for a more, just a, a bit more of a teaser, or kind of a taster of what might come. Um, but other than that, wholly enjoyable, uh, and looking forward to next week to see more of season two. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, for me, uh, I'd give this uh, three and a half whacked Wilco's out of five. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I thought this was really good. I like the follow on from the first episode. Loved the whole thing with Ramparts, really sort of dark and secretive uh, at the end. Um, I thought Romar was really good, you know, just that foil for the episode as the Bad Batch and Omega uh, make their way through uh, escaping their predicament and their situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, So really, really enjoyed this. Uh, Give it three and a half whacked Wilco's out of five. I was just thinking as well, actually, because he's called Captain Wilco, Mm -hmm. wasn't there a TV show um, with a Captain Wilco? Black and white, really old. And it was kind of in the army. I think it was US. It was a US kind of TV show. Um, Oh, Bilco. Uh, that's it. Captain Bilko. Bilko. That's, it. <laughs> that's his cousin. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's usually Roger Wilco is the, that's the it. call out. Uh, but yes, uh, that's interesting. That was it. Bilko. <laughs> if he was Captain Bilko, he'd probably uh, have walked off the cliff by mistake himself. That's it. My <laughs> references all over the shop. <laughs> it's very old, John. It's very old. So it's okay. It's it okay. is. Good stuff. Thanks so much for joining us, fellow Batchers. Uh, we will be back next week with our chat about Star Wars The Bad Batch, season two, episode three, The Solitary Clone mm. on January. 11th. And if you've enjoyed what you heard, 
on these last two episodes, make sure you head on over to tvpodcastindustries.com to like, subscribe, share, hit us up on all the main places. Make sure if you're really enjoying it, give us a, a, a kind of review. Five stars is always appreciated. Mm-hmm. And if you really enjoyed what you hear and you want to support us on our journey for the rest of season two of The Bat Batch, why not head on over to patreon.com slash tvpodcastindustries where you can support us for any ongoing monthly amount. Don't have that, don't worry, why not buy us a coffee to keep our editor-in-chief caffeinated as he toils away the wee hours of bad batching this bad episode of recordings. Because <laughs> we make some mistakes, we tell you that. But you don't hear them because he is caffeinated and he is toiling away the editing time. So, why not buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash tvpi. Ain't got that, don't worry, why not just share the podcast because we adore when you share the podcast because sharing the podcast is what gentlemen it is sharing, sharing the love yes, is. excellent stuff absolutely uh, thanks so much for joining us talk to you again next time yeah thank you so much fellow batches until next time keep watching keep listening and keep being bad bye bye bye, bye.